I slammed my bedroom door shut and spit at my best friend's picture. I hated her and everyone in my family. Because I had this condition, they thought they could use me. But oh boy, they messed with the wrong girl. Hi, I'm Lulia from Ukraine. I'm the youngest in our family with three older brothers. My dad never wanted a girl. He just wanted to raise a team of healthy young boys. He was very proud of himself for being so manly that he had only produced sons. But mom had always really wanted a daughter. When she gave birth to me, he glared down at my tiny red face and said to my mom, So, you finally did it, huh? I swear, if she isn't pretty, you're really gonna pay for it. My mom did everything to take really good care of me and make me pretty. Once she came to me and said, Listen, you're not allowed to eat junk food ever. And she snatched the candy from my hand. When she left, I opened the lower drawer and took another candy. I ate whatever I wanted behind her back. Mom started taking me to salons when I was five, and she would leave me there. I would regularly get manicures and pedicures. Every day, I'd have a routine of face masks and visits to the hair salon. But no session would go on for more than 10 minutes before I interrupted it. One time, I pushed the ladies away and yelled at them. I took out my stories. Read this for me, and I will tell mom you did a great job. They loved it. One day, I also asked them to start teaching me how to read. They said I was too young, but I said, try me. I never knew I was going to learn how to read and write in a hair salon. Dad was delighted that I turned out to be so pretty. He used to carry me around on his shoulders all over the neighborhood to show me off. One day, when I was in the fifth grade, my teacher gave me the role of the princess's dad. When dad heard about it, he came to the school the next day and yelled at the teacher and insulted her. He made her make me the princess or else. When he left, I told the teacher, I apologize for dad's stupidity. I'm going to play the role of the princess's dad because I love it. And I hugged her. There was nothing dad wouldn't do for his favorite child. But suddenly, all that changed. When I was in the seventh grade, I came back home one day feeling really itchy all over. I looked at the mirror and saw my skin was as red as a rotten tomato. Dad came in, of course without knocking, and saw me. He freaked out and quickly took me to the best skin doctor in the city. After examining me, the doctor said I had a rare condition called dermographism, which means skin writing. That's because I could etch my name into my skin using only the pressure of a fingernail. He said there was no reason for why it might flare up at times, and there was really no cure for it. When we left the clinic, I told dad, don't worry, dad, I will read about this disease and find ways to fix this. Dad looked at me with disgust and said he didn't want a daughter like me. I wished mom would just slap him or one of my brothers would tell him he's being a complete jerk, but nothing happened. Dad just turned away and left the house. Why was dad a terrible piece of, ugh, I swore to always keep my condition a secret. I couldn't trust anyone with it, except my best friend, Monica. You should come over tonight so we can read about this disease together. When dad saw her, he hugged her. Your parents must be so proud to have such a beautiful daughter. My brothers were even more ridiculous. They knew she was really rich, and my youngest brother kept asking her how many servants she had. The eldest kept hitting on her, and when she told him to stop, he said he would if she paid him $100. I threw my shoe at him and told him he was a pig. I told them all to shut up and took Monica's hand and led her to my room. We both read about the disease for days and found nothing. When I got to middle school, I had eyes only for one boy, Elon. Once, we were sitting in the library. I noticed my hands had started to turn a little red. Feeling alarmed, I let go, but suddenly, Elon pulled me in by the waist and kissed me. Just then, I saw Monica. She was standing there, staring at me with the most hateful expression. She came to me with a manic look and suddenly grabbed my wrist. Instantly, big red welts started to appear. She snatched the friendship bracelet she'd given me, sending beads flying everywhere. How could you even think of going out with Elon when you knew he's my dream? I hate you. I just stared at her, stunned. How could I possibly know? You've never said a word. You need to stop seeing him or I'll tell him about your secret. Oh, how could she? I said, fine, I will stop seeing him. She instantly smiled and hugged me tight like a psycho. Of course, I wasn't going to stop seeing Elon. Monica wasn't the boss of me. I started dating him in secret. In the school hallways, I would simply walk past him like he didn't exist but we would meet up outside later every day, and I was fast falling in love. One day, Elon and I decided to skip gym class and meet at the big tree in the schoolyard. Elon had just pulled me in for a kiss when I felt someone drag me away by my shirt. I turned around to see Monica, 
And this time, she just went insane. She kept shouting, liar, liar, as she pinched and poked my arms. Thick red rashes were popping up like crazy all over my skin. Elon stepped back, looking horrified. Look, Elon, she's a complete freak. I felt helpless at first, but then I felt a wave of fury rise inside me. I slapped her hard across the cheek and ran off. Elon kept texting me and said he couldn't care less about my allergies. All he wanted was to see me. I didn't reply to any of his calls or messages. One night, I heard a gentle tapping on my window, and I pushed back the curtains to see that it was Elon. Please, leave me alone, Elon. You deserve someone much better. I'm not leaving until you talk to me, Lulia. He just wouldn't go away, no matter how hard I tried. I was afraid he'd wake someone up, so I let him in. He took my hands and looked at me earnestly. Lulia, there isn't a thing about you that could make me love you any less. My heart completely melted, and I let him stay with me for the night. Suddenly, we heard some noises downstairs, and Elon quickly snuck out. A few moments later, I heard a knocking on the window. I smiled and ran to open it, but when I parted the curtain, I almost screamed and fell back in horror. It was Monica. What do you think you're doing here, you witch? I'm here to warn you, that boy is mine. I'm not sharing him with anyone. You better break up with him or else. I locked the window and shut the curtains in her face. Thankfully, it seemed like she'd left. But man, the girl was turning into a complete nut job. The next day in school, I could see Monica by the lockers giving me a deathly glare. I also spotted Elon smiling and waving at me. If she thought I was scared of her, she was mistaken. I ran up to him, grabbed his face, and gave him a long kiss. When I looked up, she had disappeared. What was this psycho up to? Later that day in art class, I was painting away my self-portrait, when suddenly I felt a dash of cold water on my back. I gasped, and to my horror, I saw that my painting was completely ruined. That's so much better, actually. Now it looks more like you, a freak. I just snapped. I turned around and was about to throw a tin of paint in Monica's face, but I stopped when I saw the teacher coming. My eyes, my eyes, this monster is out of control. What? I didn't even touch her. The art teacher swooped down in no time and started yelling at me. Lulia, I will not stand for this behavior. How could you hurt the most gentle girl in class? She wouldn't listen to a word I said. I kept pointing to my ruined work, but she kept on insulting me and said I'd been raised by savages. I'd just had it. Shut up, you idiot. I know her daddy's donation set up this art studio. That's the only reason you're taking her side. Of course, I ended up in the principal's office and waited while she called my parents. As soon as I saw dad walk into the office instead of mom, I just knew I was ruined. He'd probably ground me for life. The principal pursed her lips. We are shocked that any student of ours would behave like this. She has no respect for anyone and is a disgrace to this school and to you. I was sure my dad would agree with her. He rose up from his chair and punched the table. No one talks about my daughter this way. I'll make sure you regret it. She's the smartest girl you will ever meet. And he took me by the arm and we left. On our way home, he finally looked at me directly after such a long time and said, don't ever give up on what you want. Be strong and keep fighting. And that was the last time I ever saw dad. By the time I woke up the next morning, he had already packed all his bags and left for good. Mom, where did dad go? My stupid brother scowled at me. You finally drove him away. It's your stupid condition that made him so depressed. He couldn't handle having a broken daughter anymore. Mom banged her glass on the table. Shut up and stop treating your sister that way. All you men are jerks. He left because he's in love with a rich woman who's 15 years older than him. I was stunned. Dad was so confusing. I never really understood him at all. Mom started dating a new man and looked happier than I'd ever seen her. She was making an effort to look good, and I was happy for her. But my brothers weren't happy about it. Two of them left the house, and the youngest stayed because he was still in school. I didn't miss Dad all that much, really. But his last words were stuck in my head. I kept going out with Elon openly, and Monica stayed out of my way since that day. When I got to high school, though, my condition got much worse. My allergy would flare up at any time. People started to notice and would point or whisper, so I started wearing long sleeve shirts and pants to hide my skin. One day, Elon came up to me beaming. Hey, babe, you're coming over to dinner tonight. My place. I can't wait for my parents to meet you. I told him I wasn't sure if I was ready, but eventually I agreed. The minute I stepped into his house, his mom's face froze mid-smile. 
and she looked at me like I was a demon. Elon, what's that on her neck and arms? She's disgusting. What a rude woman she was. Mom, what is wrong with you? You want to keep seeing her? Fine, but you can have another girlfriend, can't you? How about that beautiful rich one who comes here often? What's her name? Yeah, that Monica. I couldn't believe my ears. What a cheater. Elon turned to me and said he could explain, but I just slapped him and left. I was so heartbroken and angry at this betrayal. I never spoke to Elon again. He tried approaching me at school a couple of times, but I always rejected him. One day, I was sitting alone on the bleachers when a handsome jock came and sat next to me. Hey, I need some help with math. Will you be my tutor? I knew exactly who he was, even if he didn't know me. Yes, of course. It's the best revenge ever. What revenge? Oh, never mind. Let's start now. We got closer over time and started going out. One day, Sean invited me over for dinner at his place. As soon as I entered the house, I spotted Monica on the stairs, staring at me in complete shock. This was priceless. What are you doing here? Oh, didn't your brother tell you? I'm his girlfriend. You can't go out with her. She's a big freak. Break up with her now. Luckily, Sean's parents walked in just then and seemed horrified by Monica's behavior. Her dad told her to shut up and go to her room. She stormed off in a rage. Sean's parents were so lovely. I had no idea how they'd raised a witch like Monica, but I decided to try and mend things with her and went to her room after dinner. Monica was lying on the bed and didn't even turn around to look at me. I sat down and said, Look, Monica, you and I used to be best friends once. Can we just start over? I forgive you for everything you did to me. Who asked for your forgiveness? And in a flash, she'd turned to pounce on me like a wildcat. Before she could hurt me, Sean barged in and pulled her away from me. Thank you for saving me from your crazy sister. And I started kissing him just to make Monica angry. She screamed in anger and left her own room. Weeks passed and I graduated from high school with honors. I'd never meant to fall in love with Sean, but I had over this time we'd been dating. One day, my youngest brother came to me and asked me to ask Sean for money. What? I won't do that. I'm not a gold digger, you moron. We got into an argument for an hour until he tried to attack me. I threw a plate at him, but it missed his face by inches. Fine, I know what I'm going to do. The next day, Sean called me to tell me that my brother was caught last night trying to steal Sean's car. Oh my God, that was so embarrassing. He told me he wasn't going to send him to jail for me. When my brother came home, I yelled at him. He said that he'd had enough of me and mom and he left to live with dad. Whatever, at least I had Sean. We were headed to different colleges and we promised that we would make a long distance relationship work. But almost as soon as I left, it got really difficult to get a hold of him. He'd mostly reject my calls and say he was busy, but I could see from his Instagram account that he was partying hard. Then he wouldn't even reply to my messages for weeks when he finally did. It was to say that he wanted to break up with me because long distance was too hard. Plus, he thought that me and my family were weird and crazy. What a jerk. I was pretty sure he'd found some bimbo. I stopped dating for a whole year and would turn down any offers by guys to go out. I wanted to do well at university so I could make something of myself. One day, I walked into a lecture hall and I couldn't believe my eyes. I never thought I'd ever see him again. It was Elon. He came and sat beside me and said he deserved one chance to explain himself. He said that he never loved Monica and she kept stalking him and showing up at his place, but he'd always rejected her. He'd wanted to try talking to me again, but by then I was seeing Sean. We started dating once more and Elon decided to tell his parents. He called his mom and she went berserk over the phone. I could hear her shouting, There is no way you can ever bring that girl to my home. Fine, mom. Then I guess I won't ever be coming home too. And with that, he hung up. After a year of dating, we got married. There was no one at the ceremony except the two of us, and we didn't care. We didn't need anyone ruining our happiness. Four months after the wedding, I called up mom to tell her I was married and was pregnant. She seemed delighted for me, but said she was too busy with her new husband to come see me. Elon and I were blessed with a lovely baby girl, Anastasia, and we are making sure that we teach her to always love her. When we finally opened the doors to our cafe, for a minute, he was completely silent. But suddenly, he burst into tears and kissed my hands. This is food from the heavens, fit for kings. When Grandma took the first bite, she looked like she was having a heart attack. 
What? How? When did you learn to bake like that? I've never had something so amazing in my entire life. I'm telling you, this girl is doing witchcraft. It wasn't just any ordinary morning. The birds were chirping, the sun was shining. I had turned 16 yesterday. And last night, my first love, Ryan, had finally kissed me. Life was perfect. Well, at least for five minutes. Because as soon as I stepped out of my room, Mom rushed to me, crying like a baby. What's wrong, Mom? She told me that Aunt Melissa, her best friend, was moving away because her husband got a job transfer. What? Just when we had saved up enough to start our own cafe. As sorry as I was for Mom, I had bigger problems. You see, Aunt Mel was Ryan's mom. I rushed out of the house. I had to see Ryan. He was playing video games when I entered his room, looking completely unbothered. What's wrong, babe? Why are you crying? Because you're going! Please don't! Ryan put down the game and took my hands in his. I don't really have a choice, babe. But you and I are soulmates. We'll make long distance work. After a few days, Ryan stopped calling or replying to my messages. He said too much screen time wasn't good for either of us. But there he was, uploading pictures on Facebook with a new girl every day. And that's how I had my first heartbreak. Hi, I'm Carrie, and this is the story of how I transformed my life and had boys drooling over me at the same time after my childhood crush left me high and dry. Please click on subscribe and I'll continue my story. Thanks. I'd been moping around long enough over Ryan. I decided I needed a change and mom agreed to send me to visit my grandmother in Provence, France. I was glad I was going there. Maybe I'd meet some nice guy. I deserve to meet someone great and move on from that jerk Ryan. Wow, Ryan had nothing on the cute French boys here. My heart was about to be healed very soon. The moment I arrived, I could see this group of boys looking at me. One of them walked up to me and said, Hey gorgeous, what's it like looking at the man of your dreams? Okay, this is going to be easier than I thought. It was grandma's 60th birthday and I decided to bake her a cake. How hard could it be? I'd seen mom do it a million times. The whole neighborhood had gathered on her birthday. When grandma took the first bite, she looked like she was having a heart attack. Was it that bad? Finally, she managed to say, w What? H how? When did you learn to bake like that? I've never had something so amazing in my entire life. She hugged me so hard I could hardly breathe, and the whole neighborhood went gaga over the cake. A fight nearly broke out with people trying to get another piece. I spent the rest of the summer baking like my life depended on it, because there was always a crowd of people outside Grandma's house waiting to try my stuff. Grandma's crazy old neighbor would come over every day to have my desserts while she'd glare at me and grumble, I'm telling you, this girl is doing witchcraft. The minute I landed back home, I knew what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I convinced Mom to take a loan to make up for Aunt Mel's share and start her dream cafe with me. When we finally opened the doors to our cafe, both of us held our breath as our very first customer took a bite of the chocolate eclair. For a minute, he was completely silent. Oh no. He hated it, but suddenly, he burst into tears and kissed my hands. This is food from the heavens, fit for kings. Turns out he was a famous food critic. After his review, word of our quaint French cafe spread like wildfire. People were lining up to the end of the street to try my desserts. But soon enough, I realized they kept coming back for me, too. Boys would hang out around the cafe for hours just to catch a glimpse of me. How are you so perfect? You've got the face of an angel and the hands of one, too. By the end of the month, Time magazine had me and my creations on the front cover with the title Beauty and Her Feast. And Cosmopolitan said that at Sweet 16, I was all the sweetness people needed in their lives. My Instagram followers shot up and my mailbox was getting flooded with love letters. One day, as I was unloading flower sacks out of the van, I saw a group of school kids come around the corner. Among them was the school heartthrob, Sean. As our eyes met, he smiled at me. I turned away when I saw one of the girls with him glaring at me with crazy jealous eyes. I knew she was his ex. Didn't need any of that drama. Five seconds later, as they came closer, she accidentally pushed me. Watch out! Sean jumped forward to catch the sack, and before we knew it, we were both on the ground covered in flour from head to toe and looking like ghosts. We glanced at each other and burst out laughing. I told him he could come inside to clean up, and he asked his friends to go on without him. His ex looked like her head was gonna explode.
Once he'd cleaned up, I made him some creme brulee. He nearly fell off the chair after the first mouthful. Wow, I could eat this every day for the rest of my life. This is even better than I thought it would be. You're thinking about my food? Well, not just about the food. Suddenly he leaned forward, and I thought he was going to kiss me, but he said I'd missed a spot and brushed some flour off my nose. My heartbeat went wild. Just then, Mom came into the kitchen and glared at us as I introduced Sean. Of course she wasn't happy. She'd always wanted me to be with Ryan. By the end of the month, Sean and I started dating. After he showed up at the cafe to serenade me, Ryan was just an old heartbreak now, and so yesterday. Meanwhile, Sean was fun and caring and very much in love with me. Life was pretty much perfect. Little did I know, I had spoken too soon. As soon as I entered school the next day, there was quite a commotion. Apparently a new guy was on the basketball court giving Sean a run for his money. It really was a tough match that ended in a draw. But just then, I caught a glimpse of the new boy, and I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Ryan! It had been over a year since I'd last heard from him. Why had he come back? Sean saw me and came running over. He's really good, isn't he? We'll be a much stronger team with him around. Before I could say anything, Ryan jumped to hug me. Carrie, I missed you! And instantly, I pulled away from him. I'm sorry, I think you have the wrong person. I walked away as fast as I could. I needed time to process this. I took a sick leave and went home early. I went running to mom's room and stopped in my tracks when I saw Aunt Mel sitting with her. She pulled me in for a hug. Did you see Ryan in school? He wanted to surprise you. Surprise me he did. I was just telling Aunt Mel how much you missed Ryan. I did not. Aunt Mel acted like she hadn't even heard me. It's a good thing we're back then. Then she said that she and mom would finally be able to run their dream cafe together. Wait, what? Thanks for helping out when I wasn't around, kiddo. But it's my cafe. It's famous because of me. But I'm sure you have your hands full with school, sweetheart. Don't worry, Aunt Mel is here now. I was so annoyed. Later that day, Sean dropped by to see me. We were sitting on the porch when a car came into my driveway. I didn't need to look twice to see who it was. Ryan walked up to us, completely ignoring Sean. Babe, I've been looking for you everywhere. I felt Sean get tense as he put his arm around me. How do you know each other again? Oh, we go way back. We have a shared past. Yeah, and that's where I'd like to leave you too. In the past. I told Sean I'd call him later and went inside. Ryan immediately followed the little leech. The minute he saw mom though, he practically pushed me aside and went screaming to hug her tight. Oh, you're even handsomer than before and have you grown taller? Stupid vain boy. He started making crepes along with mom and watching him in our kitchen just made me feel angrier. Thinking about me? You wish. I'm not going to forgive you just because you're making me crepes once. Then I'll keep making them till you do. But don't eat too many. We don't want you getting fat. And he finally left. My mom couldn't stop talking about how wonderful it would be if the two of us got together. Uh, mom, I'm with Sean now. Well, yes, but you can break up with him. Both Mel and I would be thrilled. I stormed off to my room. Why did mom keep forgetting Ryan was a jerk who broke my heart? Come to think of it, Aunt Mel was a bit of a jerk too. And a bossy one at that. She wanted to change everything about the cafe. One day I came home from school to find her painting the beautiful lavender walls an ugly shade of pink. She kept picking faults with the menu, but she still always wanted to know more about my recipes. One afternoon, I came to the cafe and was horrified to see that she had changed the signboard outside. Now her name was on it too. She had even managed to convince mom to open another bank account without me. Another day, I walked into the kitchen to hear her saying to mom, I saw that you recently had a couple of bad reviews online. That's what happens when you let a child do everything. I hated her poking her nose in my business, but that's not all I had to worry about. One Saturday, when I went to open up the cafe with mom, we stopped short in horror. All across the window, someone had painted, take your stupid desserts and leave our town. Just then, Aunt Mel turned up behind us, staring at the view in shock, and then she burst into tears. Who would do such a horrible thing to me? I bet it's that old witch down the street who keeps complaining our customers are too noisy. While mom consoled her, I tried not to imagine what it would be like to punch her, and I couldn't help wondering who would do such a thing to my cafe. As if all this wasn't annoying enough, Ryan had begun to constantly hover around me. He started following me around in school, not leaving me alone with Sean for a second. I was sitting with Sean one day and having french fries when he popped up out of nowhere and took away my plate. You shouldn't be eating fried food. Sean, how could you let her? Er, I'm not her dad and neither are you. 
before I could even say anything, he threw the fries in the garbage and put a salad in front of me. And why aren't you wearing sunscreen? Your skin looks spotty. After school, he was always over at the cafe, telling everyone he worked there as a waiter. And later, he'd turn up at my place in the evening, sticking to me like glue while mom and I were watching TV. One evening when mom was out, I called Sean over to a romantic dinner for two. Just as he was leaning over the table to kiss me, and I closed my eyes, I felt a hand pushing my face away. My eyes flew open, and I nearly fell back to see it was Ryan. Isn't it kind of gross to kiss without having some breath mints first? Man, are you crazy? Yes, crazy in love. Ryan, I've just had it. Get out. Okay, okay, just let me take my phone from under the table. Sean literally had to stop me from throwing a plate at Ryan as he ran out. I was trying to keep my cool, but he was really crossing a line and then some. One night, I woke up to the sound of something being dragged across the room. I sat up in bed and let out a loud scream. Who, who's there? And then I saw a shadow move and a voice called in the darkness. Hello, Carrie. I nearly had a heart attack. Ryan! He was sitting in a chair staring at me like a creep. He had a box in his hands. What are you doing in my room? I came to give you this. I know it's that time of the month for you and you need some extra love. What the? How do you know? Oh, I just installed the same period app that you use and asked your mom about your last date. Now, use the heating pad and herbal tea and don't eat all the chocolates. Mom! Mom! She came rushing in and I told her what Ryan was doing, but she didn't see any problem with it. He just really cares about you, honey. A few days later, Ryan was being his nosy self and helping me serve at the cafe. This old woman smiled and turned to me. He will make an excellent husband. Oh, no, no, no. We aren't together. Of course we are. She's just shy and slightly angry with me at the moment. Ah, to be young and in love. Seems like it was all the encouragement Ryan needed. He put his arm around my shoulder, and before I knew it, he pulled me in for a kiss. Get your paws off me! Sean came in just then, looking furious. He punched Ryan and knocked him to the floor. Everyone stared in shocked silence. Ryan glared at us, brushed himself off, and walked out of the cafe without a word. Ryan wasn't talking to me anymore, and I wasn't complaining. Mom and Aunt Mel were both really cold to me, though. But we all had more troubling stuff to deal with right now. Someone had complained that our kitchens were filthy and had rats running around. The food inspection authority came to check to find our kitchens spotless, of course. I was furious. Even though these rumors were false, they weren't good for business. A few days later, Sean came to me, literally jumping with excitement. Babe, I've got brilliant news for you. My dad's cousin is a huge rock singer and he's getting married and he wants you to cater. There will be so many famous people there. I was thrilled. This was the biggest order I'd ever gotten and it could really make or break me. The three of us spent weeks preparing everything. I was almost glad for Aunt Mel right now. We needed all the help we could get. The entire neighborhood was excited about their local bakery catering for a celebrity wedding. On the day of the wedding, we got to the venue and unloaded the tiered cake onto the trolley. Suddenly, a wheel slipped out, the trolley tilted, and the cake went sliding away. Sean flew towards it and somehow managed to save it just before it hit the ground. Aunt Mel shrieked, Oh dear God, I feel faint. Someone give me my smelling salts. It's okay, we're okay, I have extra frosting, we can fix it. We carried off the cake to the kitchen, and I fixed up the smudged parts in no time. I let out a sigh of relief as Sean and Ryan carried out the cake to the garden. Just then, I noticed some frosting on my hand, and I licked it. Uh, what? Why did it taste so disgusting and salty? I stared at the scene in front of me in horror. The bride and groom were cutting the cake. OMG, I couldn't let anyone eat this. No! I ran towards the table like a maniac, and just when I was close, I tripped over my own shoelaces. I practically flew and landed straight into the cake and half of it went flying onto the bride's dress. She screamed in fury while the groom hopped around because some had landed in his eye. He stepped over the bride's dress and we all heard a loud rip. I looked up from the cake wishing I could just disappear magically. The bride was wailing loudly while everyone stared at me in horror. I don't remember how we made it back to the cafe. We all sat around in stunned silence. I finally spoke up. Only one way to find out who tampered with the cake. I had a secret camera installed here last month, you know, just to keep a check on things. We waited breathlessly around the TV, looking at the footage, and sure enough, we saw two people sneak into the kitchen two nights ago with a bag of salt. And those two people were Ryan and Mel. 
We looked around to see the two sprinting away, but the three of us were right behind them and tackled them to the ground. Mom stared at Mel in shock. I can't believe you would do something like this. To your own friend, were you behind everything else that's been happening too? Aunt Mel looked like a crazy person. The cafe was my idea. All this praise and money should be mine, and this idiot child took away everything. Now that your reputation is down the gutter, you'll both get what you deserve. I looked at Ryan, and he just shrugged. If you'd shown me the appreciation I deserved, I might have stopped her. I was absolutely furious now. You! But before I could continue, Sean was already holding him by the collar of his shirt. If you love your face, leave and don't come back. As the two scurried away, we just stood there silently for a moment. Then mom pulled me in and hugged me tight. I'm so sorry for trusting her blindly. We will fix this. Just you and me. Suddenly, she pulled in Sean as well. And you too. Turns out the crazy wedding video went viral. And while I thought that would be a really bad thing, it just ended up making our cafe more popular. We had more people coming around than ever. Last I heard of Mel and Ryan, they left town before word of what they'd done spread around. I still always check under the table every time I'm on a date with Sean, though.